Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Which is called the sodium potassium pump. So now we will talk about this special type of channel because this is also present on the membrane. So on the axolemma, you also have this sodium potassium pump. Now what is sodium potassium pump? This is a specialized channel which allows co-transport. Now what do we mean by co-transport? Co means both. So it allows transport of both sodium and potassium. That sounds interesting. So till now, a particular ion channel either allowed sodium or it allowed potassium. But this is a specialized type of channel which will allow both sodium and potassium. Now you might wonder how can it allow both sodium and potassium? I mean on what mechanism basically? Because on one end you have more sodium. On the other end you have more potassium. So if it is allowing both sodium and potassium then from which side to which side which one will flow? Because it, it cannot flow along the concentration gradient. Right? So that will create a confusion. So now here it is not a passive channel. It is an active transport. Now when I say active transport, what do I mean? That means the transport happens by use of energy. So you need to provide energy to make that transport happen. So now in this case, it is not necessary that the ion or whether it is sodium or potassium, it has to move along the concentration gradient. They can move against the concentration gradient by use of energy. That is what is known as active transport, right? We spoke about, we have already studied about active transport and passive transport. Passive means whenever the flow happens without any expense of energy from high concentration to low concentration. Active means when the flow happens from low concentration to high concentration by use of energy. So for this type of transport in sodium potassium pump, ATP is utilized. When we say energy is used, that means ATP is being utilized for this type of transport. Now what happens in this type of transport? Okay, so now with this sodium potassium pump, what happens is that this is how the membrane is. Right, and this is outside, this is inside. So in outside, you had initially more of sodium ions. Inside, you had more of potassium ions. Then you had the sodium channels and you also had the potassium channels. So this is what we studied so far, that you had the potassium channels, which were passive channels sending potassium from inside to outside. Sodium channel sending sodium outside to inside. Now on top of all these you have uh, a sodium potassium pump which is going to be something like this which allows co-transport. So what does it do? It, it actually sends potassium in that is it sends potassium inside and it sends sodium outside. So this happens against the concentration gradient because sodium concentration is more outside but still the movement of sodium is happening from low concentration to high concentration at the expense of energy. Similarly the movement of potassium is also happening at the expense of energy and what is that energy? That is nothing but ATP. Now what is the net result of the transport by sodium potassium pump? The net result of this sodium potassium pump is that for every three sodium ions being sent out, there are two potassium ions which are sent in. So that means more sodium ions are sent out and less potassium ions are pushed in. So this is the net result of the sodium potassium pump. Now a question might bother you that okay you got it that this sodium potassium pump will uh, result in active transport that is why against concentration. So it will utilize ATP and then it will allow them to move against the concentration gradient. But are you clear about how it allows co-transport, how it allows allows both sodium and potassium to flow through the same channel but in opposite direction. If not, please understand it with the help of this beautiful example which I am sure all of you will understand. Have you ever been to a park or a museum or any such place 
or even a hotel or something where you have a, a rotating gate of this fashion. I am sure you would have seen this type of gate somewhere or the other. So what happens in this type of rotating gate? Now when this person, so if you see this person wants to get in, come inside and this person wants to come out of the park. Let us suppose this is the inside of the park. So this man wants to go inside the park and this man wants to come outside the park. Now there is just one gate and this is rotating. So the blades are rotating here. So just this pictorial representation here will help you to understand how it happens. So if you see when the gate rotates it allows one person to go in and the other person to come out. So if you want you can see it once again. So it actually allows one person to go in and the other person to come out. Right? So just one gate. So similarly just one sodium potassium pump but it allows sodium to go out and potassium to come in and for every three sodium ions going out there are two potassium ions coming in. So now, now we know about all the ion channels which are present on the uh, membrane, the neuron membrane or the axolema, whatever you call. So we know the sodium channels, we know the potassium channels, we know the sodium potassium pump. So now based on whatever we have studied, what should be our conclusion? Because right now we are only talking about the resting membrane potential. The neuron is at rest. It is not conducting anything. So now our conclusion based on all these three is that the outer surface of the membrane is positively charged. Inner surface of the membrane is negatively charged. So we mean that if this is the membrane, this is the outside. So outside will have a net positive charge and inside will have a net negative charge. So that is the conclusion knowing all the three types of channels which are present on the membrane. Because there is so much of ion exchange happening. Sodium going out, sodium coming in, potassium going out, potassium coming in. But the net result is that inside there is a negative charge, outside there is a positive charge. Now when you have two different charges on two sides of the membrane, what happens? A net potential difference will develop and that will make the membrane polarized. So therefore, we say that the membrane is polarized with a net potential difference across it. Now, if you are not clear about how the net positive, net negative charge developed inside, let us quickly look at the overall picture of all the ion channels which we dis discussed in the last few slides. So this is my membrane. So this is my axolemma, this is also axolemma and inside is the axoplasm. So this is the inside of the axon and this is the outside which is extracellular fluid. This is also outside which is extracellular fluid. Now where do we have the ion channels? They are nothing but transmembrane proteins somewhere here. So let us suppose these are the potassium channels. The blue ones are the potassium channels. So what are these channels? These are passive channels. That is, they are always open. So they will allow potassium to move from region of high concentration to region of low concentration. Now initially, where is potassium more? Potassium is more inside, in the axolemma. So these will allow potassium to move out. So these will be sending potassium out. Right? Because it will allow movement along the concentration gradient. Right? This will also send potassium out. Okay. So this is the first type of channel. The next type of channels are the sodium channels which are lesser in number than the potassium channels. So these yellow colored channels are the sodium channels. They are also passive channels. So they will allow sodium to move from region of high concentration towards region of low concentration. And we know that sodium is more outside when compared to inside. So these channels will push sodium inside. Right? Now as a result of these two channels, what do we see? There is more positive charge outside because more positively charged ions are coming outside and inside we already have some negatively charged immobile ions like the proteins and the phosphate ions. Right? That is already there. Now on top of these two ion channels, we also have these special type of channels called the sodium potassium pump and what does these do? They allow bi-transport that is that is also known as co-transport 
that is they send sodium ions outside and they push the potassium ions inside but they send three sodium ions outside and for that they put pull only two potassium ions inside so similarly happens for this so it pulls two potassium ions inside and it sends three sodium ions outside now what is the result of these channels these channels also sends more positive ions outside and less positive ions inside so if you compare now forget about the negative charges for the time being even if you consider only the positive charges only the positively charged sodium ions and potassium ions you observe that there are less positively charged ions inside when compared to outside because by sodium potassium pump every time there is one extra positive ion going outside even for uh, the potassium and sodium channels there also more put positive ions are going outside so more positive ions are present outside when compared to inside on top of that there are some immobile negatively charged ions already present inside so that means inside is negatively charged and outside is positively charged and this is what we are talking about here so outside of the membrane is positive inside of the membrane is negative this gives rise to a potential difference and that is why the membrane is said to be polarized thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.